Hey guys, Glitcher A51 here with our final film in the Heisei series for our Godzilla retrospective. Gojira versus Destroyer. Okay. English translation: in Godzilla versus Destroyer. Uh, also known as Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Um, yeah, okay. Before we get into the film, I need to go over a couple of things before. In uh, 1995, when they started announcing the death of Godzilla and all that jazz, I was in the process of moving from state to state. So, and there was a huge blizzard in Pennsylvania where I lived. So I didn't really get the news that this was happening. I didn't learn about this until maybe the summer of 1996. I went with a friend of mine to a uh, library, and they had a magazine there, and we were looking, it was a sci-fi magazine, and there it was. Death of Godzilla. They didn't explain how it happened. They didn't say what did it. I At first I thought, this guy did it. Destroya did it. However, they, they they were kind of uh, brief with what they were talking about in the in the uh, article. They didn't really say what happened. They just, all they said was Godzilla dies. So, didn't really learn much about it until I went to a comic book store in the summer of 1997, when we were able to see Godzilla vs. Destroyer on VHS bootleg. That's right. The uh, embargo thing with Godzilla products was still in effect. And this film did not come out to uh, the States until the year after, in 1998. Yeah, it's, we'll get into that. But, um, well, that's my little backstory with Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Now let's get into the film. Our film opens with Mickey Sagusa going to Birth Island. looking for uh, Godzilla and uh, little Godzilla. However, the island has been destroyed. An underwater volcano has erupted, destroying it. Both are missing. Then we cut to Hong Kong. Yes, Hong Kong. And we start seeing you know, planes taking off and landing. When this uh, plane is taking off, and then we see this. Yes, Godzilla has arrived already in the film, setting a record for the quickest uh, time he's ever been in a film fully, except this time he's a lot different. Large patches of burning skin are all over Godzilla. The chest, the the neck, the legs, the hips, the dorsal plates. With uranium fire firing the entire time now, we have burning Godzilla, and he is pissed about something. Walking into Hong Kong and just ripping it to pieces over and over again. No rhyme or reason to what he's doing. He's not there to feed. It's Hong Kong. It's outside of his stomping ground. So what's Godzilla doing in Hong Kong? Well, he's there just to destroy, and we spend a good f ten minutes of the film watching Godzilla destroy Hong Kong. He eventually finishes and goes into the ocean as we get our opening telecrawl. Of Godzilla's destroy. So then... Back in Japan, they are looking over information about Godzilla, trying to figure out what all of this is. And there is a thesis written by this guy, saying that Godzilla's heart is a nuclear reactor, and it has begun to break down. And once it fully breaks down, it is going to cause Godzilla to explode. So the Japanese uh, military and the G-Force bring in this kid, who's actually uh, the adopted son of Dr. Yamane from Gojira in 
1954. And he has a lot of information about Godzilla. And he's helping out. And he, what really seals the deal is that he learns that Mickey Sagusa is working for G-Force. Well, of course she is. You know, that's what she was doing before. Even though she was more along the lines of the telepathy uh, team. And uh, she didn't really want anything to do with G-Force anymore. She's now back working with them full time. Apparently her powers are starting to waver now. Her interest is looking for the little one to uh, find out where it's gone and if it survived the uh, volcano. What does this genius say? He says, oh, it probably died. Yeah, how could you be so sure that it survived the effects? Well, mainly Godzilla survived the effects, so one would think that if a Godzilla sword, which Godzilla is, then he would have survived the effects. Well, but whatever, to be honest, we'll get into that. As they continue to look for ways to deal with Godzilla, we see that they come up with this plan, or at least the kid does, Yamane's kid, or adoptive son, actually comes up with the plan that if we use any bombs or any explosives, we could set off the explosion. So what do we do instead? He suggests using the oxygen destroyer. You know, a lot has been uh, done with the oxygen destroyer to make sure it doesn't come back and no one uses it. And that's a pretty big step to take to use one immediately remake the oxygen destroyer. So this kid's sister actually goes to speak to the grandmother of uh, what's of their family, who ends up becoming Emiko Yamane, the returning actress from Gojira. And she says, all the papers are gone. Uh, Dr. Serizawa took the uh, idea to the grave with him. Well, we see that uh, this new scientist in Japan is actually working on pretty much the same idea of what uh, Serizawa was. So they're trying to talk him into uh, not building the machine at first. Because they don't want the things of the past to happen and bad things to happen to Japan. However, they found the area where the original oxygen destroyer went off, and they found uh, samples where a living organism was, and to see that this organism has actually been mutated by the oxygen destroyer, and has gotten into a uh, water supply, into a uh, uh, fishing tank, and actually is now devouring everything in its path. Trying to find out a way to deal with this, Godzilla stood out, uh, still out in the ocean, swimming around, doing his thing, looking for something. What's he looking for? Well, they track the uh, path where he's going, and they see carcasses of uh, dead whales. Come to see that, well, Godzilla is here. Then something else is eating these whales. Cut to a little bit forward. And these uh, crustacean little creatures uh, have now started growing into larger uh, creatures. And resembling this. And we have ourselves a James Cameron aliens moment where they're actually the Japanese government sends in a military team to deal with the destroy uh, babies, or let's call them what they are. Or juveniles, whatever you want to call them, bullets and fire doesn't work on them. There's an awesome fight sequence where the Japanese fight these destroyers. They're able to subdue them, but not completely defeat them. Meanwhile, out in the ocean, Godzilla arrives. And he wants more uh, radiation for some reason. And he goes to uh, this one plant to take over it, but then the Japanese show they have a new weapon, the Super X-3, piloted by this guy. 
Yes, the same pilot of uh, Garuda from uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, or Godzilla vs. Super Mechagodzilla. I don't know if he's the same name, it's the same guy, but it's the same actor, so one would think that it's the same guy, especially since uh, Super X3 is built more like a plane now, like Garuda was. It is the same actor, however, it is uh, Kuraki from uh, Godzilla vs. Biollante. Same actor, however, you know, a little wink, I guess, to um, uh, past films, but, you know, okay. There's a battle, and instead of uh, bombs being attached to a Super X3, they actually attach uh, freezer units. To actually freeze Godzilla, and he gets frozen in the ocean. And after six hours, he swims away. Meanwhile, back on land, they, they look at some of the remains of some of the destroyers, and they see that they uh, actually are susceptible to freezing. So they switch out all the fire for ice, and another battle takes place with the destroyers. This time with ice. Taking over, and the destroyers retreating. Meanwhile, at a nearby beach, Mickey Sagusa finds this cute little guy. That's right. Now a junior, Godzilla Jr., looking a lot more like Godzilla now. And she sees that uh, Junior's head north, the same position where Godzilla is going, out to the Bering Sea. So apparently there's a nest out there, I guess it's Adona Island, and they're going to make a family there. However, Godzilla's temperature is rising too quickly. Even with the Super X3 and its cadmium shells, his temperature's rising too fast, and he's going to explode. Meanwhile, back on land, the destroyers all come together and form this. The Aggregate Destroyer. And... It starts tearing through everything. All the ice stuff isn't working. So Mickey Sagusa is actually talked into bringing Junior to Japan to battle this destroyer. Why? Because they want to bring Godzilla to Japan and then have Destroyer fight Godzilla. The sole purpose is because Destroyer has the oxygen destroyer inside of it. So they theorize that Destroyer can use micro oxygen to kill Godzilla, thus stopping his explosion. Okay, um. Alright, so they do that. Um, with the help of a, a new uh, telepath named Miru. They bring uh, Junior to uh, Japan, and Junior fights this uh, destroyer, who now has a flying form as well. And they have quite the battle. Uh, Godzilla coming to Japan, but Junior fighting off destroyer, actually defeating him and knocking him into a large building and causing a massive explosion. Destroyer is seemingly dead, as Godzilla and Junior meet up at a uh, airport, and you see how much bigger Godzilla is than uh, Junior. Did they really think that that Destroyer, the aggregate version of Destroyer, was going to defeat Godzilla? You know, maybe if it had some kind of giant version. Okay, so Destroyer has become its adult form, and begins uh, moving towards Godzilla and Destroyer. With Godzilla and Junior. Blah, too many names, sorry. Knocking Godzilla over, and then... <sighs> killing Junior. Yes, flies high up into the air and releases Junior, and Junior falls to his death. 
Godzilla enraged by this, Mickey Sagusa crying over this, and then one final battle begins between Godzilla and Destroya. The two of them firing their uh, atomic enemy energies at each other. Godzilla with his uranium fire. Destroy with micro oxygen. The two seem evenly matched. However, Destroy is much larger than Godzilla, actually knocking Godzilla around, absorbing some of his energy through his uh, tail. And it's a huge battle between the two. And as this battle is going on, Godzilla's temperature continues to rise. His dorsal plates actually begin melting during the fight. Things seemingly uh, over at this point, because Destroy is still in one piece. Godzilla is melting. Well, what's going to happen? Well, Godzilla pulls the stops out, begins releasing atomic pulses over and over again at Destroya, and then breathing continuous uranium fire at Destroya, causing massive explosions. Pieces of Destroya are flying off. Destroyer tries to escape, but the Japanese military are able to go around and use ice machines and freeze Destroyer. Destroyer falls to his death. That's right, Godzilla does not get the killing blow on Destroyer. We'll get into that later, okay? Trust me. As things seemingly, uh, you know, as a victory, Godzilla's temperature raises too much, and it's meltdown. So Meltdown has begun. As Godzilla continues to moan in pain and roar into the sky, seemingly dying. The Japanese military has arrived after dealing with uh, Destroya and begin firing their weapons at Godzilla. They have freezer units, ice machines, all these different cadmium bombs, trying to limit the damage that Godzilla could possibly do, not only to Japan, but the world. Godzilla kept moving around as they kept firing on him, but the ice was able to hold him in place. Firing uh, from Super X3, everyone kept on firing. Seemingly uh, stopping what was going to happen was Godzilla's explosion. However, the music began to sound like angels crying from the heavens, seemingly calling uh, the King of the Monsters home. As his skin began to melt off of his face exposing his skull. Godzilla unable to roar anymore. We get a long way shot of Godzilla as the rest of his body begins to melt away as well. His dorsal plates explode from his back. His arms melt away off the body. And his chest explodes outward with a uh, huge rush of radiation. As he moans one more time and then drips into a puddle and is no longer there. They said that they were going to do it and they did it. Godzilla dies in this film. Not by Destroyer's hands, not by the military's hands, but by nuclear power, which was the original theme of uh, Gojira back in 1954 was uh, radiation and nuclear power can be a good thing however if you use improperly nothing but devastation will come and that's what happened not only with Godzilla destroying the city but also Godzilla being consumed by that radiation and dying as Japan is print as sorry as Tokyo is pretty much a ghost town and that is the end for the King of the Monsters.
However, after the firing is done, the radiation that they are detecting begins to disappear. Earlier in the film, Godzilla was trying to pass on some of that radiation to the dying body of Junior. He was unsuccessful. However, deep in the mist of this close area where uh, Godzilla had died, Mickey Sagusa says that her work on Godzilla is now done. And unfortunately, that is the last time that we see her in any Godzilla film. However, Miru, the new telepath, she senses something deep within the this, this snowy mist. What does she sense? The power went into the dead body of Junior, and with a sleight of hand, maybe uh, some uh, forces beyond our comprehension, Junior has absorbed all the radiation and has become the new Godzilla. As he roars loud into the sky, the film ends with a huge collage of uh, scenes from uh, Goja all the way to scenes from Godzilla vs. Destroya. And with this brilliant uh, Akira Fukube music as the final film music of the uh, Heisei series. And that was Godzilla vs. Destroya. You know, for a film that is the uh, death of Godzilla, this movie was a blast from beginning to end. Now, I recommend you buy this version because it has not only the film, it has trailers, and also has uh, the making of and deleted scenes to Godzilla vs. Destroya. Now, earlier I said when Destroya falls to the ground and the military kills uh, Destroya, that was only one ending that they had. In the deleted ending, Destroya gets back up, and Godzilla and uh, Destroya continue battling. Godzilla actually tearing the horn from Destroya's head, and Destroya freezing, and Godzilla destroying uh, Destroya then. Now, it didn't look like it was finished. It looked like there were a couple of things that went wrong during it, but in my opinion, that would have been a lot better than him, the Destroyer falling to the ground and just dying then. Okay, but, you know, can't win them all, I guess. The music is breathtaking in this film. The song Requiem, when Godzilla is burning down and melting down, and just the emotion everyone has on their face to see Mickey Sagusa. Well, she's crying, well, how she feels like her entire life is uh, at an end. Just, everything is just so emotional in this film. This is one of the best Godzilla films. Probably a tie for the best with Gojira in 1954, because it has the same kind of um, themes and the same kind of message in it. It all feels like this is one huge story, and I recommend this film just as much as I recommend seeing the original film in 1954. I give Godzilla vs. Destroya an S. The final film of the Heisei series, and what did Toho do after Godzilla vs. Destroya? Well, Mothra got her own trilogy. Other franchises uh, came and gone, but there are always a thought of what is next for Godzilla. Well, in 1998, we got our next answer for what was going to be for Godzilla. As TriStar picked up the rights from Toho, and they made their version. Cover that next time. Alright guys, this is Goja51 saying goodnight. Please like, comment, subscribe. See y'all later.